Okay, back at it. Back at it. We're going to wiggle it around and see if that helped. Oh, yeah, that helped tremendously. Feels like it's in a bind. It's loose, but it's in a bind. I'm not sure why. I'm gonna go to the other side and take a look. Aha! Uh -huh. There's a hidden wire back here. For one thing that I would not have seen. Okay, we're gonna go inside. I'm on this. This is the air conditioner box, and it's pulled away from the firewall. It's wedged up in here, but way down here, there's a, a, a wire connected, and it's got a metal. I know you're not gonna be able to see that, but there's a metal clip right here holding it together. And that metal clip is screwed on the side of that housing. I can't reach that screw right now. So I'm gonna keep wiggling the housing, the, the air conditioner housing, but we're not gonna be able to pull it very far before we have to undo that screw. wasn't good <laughs> all right so this is the housing on top of the um, fan motor that came loose it just snapped off I hope it didn't just break off that's not good used a little too much force there wedge between the steering column bracket and the side of the kick panel. Just like, seems like it should just come out. It's just so close. This is just like a half an inch from coming out, you know? Like it's just, oh my gosh. <laughs> that corner down there could clear corner of this box would clear then we could get it out. Go over and lay down and look underneath it. Okay. 
it's still connected to the air conditioner duct for the other side. Got it. And looks like a little 5.5 millimeter bolt has got to come out. It's right by the brace for the steering column. I mean, it's not. It's a seven millimeter bolt. So right under the, right to the right of the steering column, there's a seven millimeter bolt and bracket. Straight up and down. Got that. Now we got to go back and do the wire before we break that. And like I said, there's that 5.5 millimeter bolt for that wire. Some sort of a motor. Looks like the defroster motor on the side of the uh, air conditioner box. Yep, I can see that because it's got some gears. It should be free now. You make sure it's not hanging on any wires coming out. That's a big thing. And you got studs sticking out, so that might affect you as far as your door panels. You don't want to get scratched up. So I'm rotating it a little bit to get the studs away from the interior panels. Check in for wires. Ah, and a wire hook around the uh, drain hose. And it came out, guys. Okay, this is what you're left with. The screw, that hidden screw was holding this bracket on right there, which was holding this all up underneath. That was one screw. But it does look like that would have slid out with it, but it also adds more bulk and size to it when it's coming out. So it makes it a little more difficult to handle. Here is the box as it sits inside the truck. And people have not taken good angles on this. I want to get all of the view this would be the side that faces your feet when you're sitting in a truck. There's your fan right here. I, I, I don't know if I broke it, but the, the cover for the fan came off. It looks like I might have broken it because there's a broken screw right here. So I'll have to repair that. There's your air conditioner evaporator. Here is your heater core cover and your two heater core hoses or tubes that come out this is the motor on the side there's that little screw that was holding the wires in for this motor this is the defroster motor and so you had to undo that screw to be able to get the wires loose
Looks like I had a little bit of a rat problem inside the fan housing uh, with some insulation in here. All right, now we're going to start, we're going to have to take this cap off and remove the heater core. To remove this cap, you need a 5.5 millimeter driver. comes off there's the heater core slide the insulation off of it pull the heater core up and it's out it's ready to go <clears throat> a little bit of antifreeze down here in the bottom now I can call for a new one and take this one with me to compare the new one to the old one to make sure we're getting exactly what we need. I don't want to make two trips on this. I'm also going to get two uh, quick connectors. Well, these are the quick connectors and they slide over this and they snap on. So I'm going to get two new quick connectors as well. Okay, let's first talk about the new heater core. So this is the new one, this is the old one. When they gave it to me, oh, by the way, the part number is 93050. It's a Murray. I bought it from O'Reilly's. They were about 90 bucks. Pretty expensive heater core. When it came out of the box, the hoses were over here like this. And I told them they in any way because the hoses don't match. And then the size of the core is the same. And by the way, they make two different cores. So you need to take your old core with you to get the new core to make sure they're the same. So the guy at O'Reilly's shows me that these things turn. Now I'm old school and uh, old heater cores were never, they were always soldered in and you weren't able to do that. If you, if you would have twisted like this on an old core, you would have torn these hoses, these tubes off of it. So, you know, it kind of uh, surprised an old school guy like me. All right, uh, this foam here is not on mine, so we'll see if I can peel this off nicely and put it on to mine. Yeah, it looks like it's going to come off. And let it wrap around. We've got the heater core ready to go in. Slide it in. Make sure the foam in the middle doesn't slide up. Wiggle it around. The hoses are fitting in the correct spot. I'm going to put the housing on top of it. three housing screws. And then we put the foam seal on the Go. And now it's ready to install. I have done this very leisurely, this job very leisurely. It's taken me several days to do it. This to me, for your average home mechanic, would not be a one day job. This would be a two or three day job. And <laughs> maybe even a lot of adult beverages, I don't know. But if you are under the gun and you're under a lot of pressure and you're on, a, you know, this is your daily driver and you're under a time crunch and you're trying to whip this thing out, this is not the job to whip out fast. 
because you're going to break things and you're going to you're going to cause some damage to the truck and you're going to cause some damage to yourself rushing through this so you know you got to you got to weigh it out i've been quoted anywhere from 800 to a thousand dollars to replace this i could see why it's very labor intensive you know a hundred dollars worth of parts the rest is all labor you can see why you've seen the video